Well, thank you. Um, it's partly the lab environment, but it's also partly finding the top young scientists to come to work in the lab. And I've always attracted very good young scientists, both men and women, because I give them a lot of freedom to develop their own research projects. And I also tell them that when they leave the lab, they can take much of their research projects with them. So for instance, James Rothman, who was in my lab 40 years ago, worked on early stages of the biosynthesis of membrane proteins using a virus system that we had developed, the vesicular stomatitis virus. And later in his own lab, he expanded that experimental system to understand how vesicles bud and fuse and take their cargo, their membrane proteins from the endoplasmic reticulum to the cell surface. And it was that work that he won the Nobel Prize for. It was based on work that he started in my lab, but of course, the work itself was done in his own lab. I mean, another example, years later, I had a postdoctoral fellow, Alan DeAndrea, who took a great risk in beginning to clone, or trying to clone the receptor for the hormone erythropoietin that controls the formation of red cells. And when he succeeded in that project, he became famous. And it also opened a huge area of research for my own laboratory and many other laboratories. So we all benefited. And the point is to encourage the creativity and independence of young people. Well, the most, well, there are many things interesting. Um, one which we often don't think about, uh, I've mentored students from probably 60 countries, and learning their cultures, in many cases visiting their countries. I mean, here I am in China, when I've trained many, many students from China, many of whom return to China. So I'm able to learn about the cultures of these students. I've been privileged to officiate at the weddings of six of my students who have come from very different countries. And again, it's a privilege to be part of their lives and their cultures. Uh, so that's certainly one thing that I've enjoyed being a mentor. And the other is really watching these people develop into independent scientists, and in many cases, world-leading scientists. And uh, knowing that I've had a small share in their career development. Yes, it's very rewarding. So you're very proud of your guys? Well, of course I am. Um, last November, we had a reunion of almost 200 of my former postdocs and students in the lab, and we had a day and a half of scientific discussions and the lectures, everyone said, were among the best conferences that they've been to because everyone was excellent and everyone was a leader in their own field, yes. Just like a big father, right? A big father. <laughs> well, a father, a grandfather, and now a great-grandfather. At the meeting I was just at in Hangzhou, there were six young people who came to me. We took a picture. Each of them had trained under a different former student of mine. So they were my grandchildren from six different children. <laughs> Scientific children, of course. You see, so yes, it's very rewarding, and they gave presentations. It's hard to predict the future, but you know, I spend a lot of time thinking and researching what we call rare diseases, that is diseases that affect, you know, in some cases, a very few people, in some cases, hundreds of thousands of people. But increasingly, we're getting a deep understanding of the genetic basis of many human diseases. I'm privileged to serve on the board of trustees of Boston Children's Hospital, a leading research hospital, and 
I can see how gene therapies are really treating children that would otherwise die or have horrible existences. So I can see development, both understanding of many, many human diseases and eventual treatments, but we still have a long way to go. And I can assure the young people who are students here and elsewhere that they will have a lot of work to do in the future.